Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jeff Gersman. We're back here with GiantBomb.com's continuing coverage of E3 2017. Day two is in the books. Night two, we're in the middle of it. So let's get right down to it. We've got some more guests here joining us from Oddworld Inhabitants. We've got Lauren Lanning. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Jeff. Thanks for having me back on. Great to see you. And Thanks. Tim Willis of Vid Software, welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Uh, so it's been uh, a crazy couple of years for it. I mean, you got Quake Champions coming out here. Mm -hmm. oh, I guess, what's the, is, is it in more of an open beta now, or is it still kind of a closed thing? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're still in beta. Mm -hmm. uh, but you just go to Quake.com, hit the little give me a key, and you can start playing. Okay, and you'll, yes. you'll definitely yeah. get a key. It's not like yeah. a Waves thing. It's, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. We, we, we keep it in beta so we can, you know, reset stats if we of need course. to and yeah. scale rankings, and we keep adding things without people getting all upset. Yeah. But it anyone does. can go on anyone and join go the beta? On? Yes. Even you, Lauren? Wow. Yes. You, we can button. all play Quake Champions. It's true. I'm an obnoxious reviewer. That's why <laughs> right. I, I never do well, it. Well, right. yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah. you have to be a certain brand of, what's the word? Asshole. That's what I am. That's how I get it. Yeah. I just don't want everyone to know that's yeah. what I am. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, Quake Champions is, uh, in some ways, a lot like the games of its past. In mm -hmm. some ways, very different. You know, the the structure of, uh, you know, this uh, class system and and all this sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I don't like to use the word class. Okay. Yes. Champion yes, system. Champions. Yeah. At its heart, it's still pure Quake. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, since I've made all the Quakes. I know Quake Heart. That's right. You would know. Yeah. I would know, and uh, uh, it is it is true to, to to what the franchise is. Yeah, and it's uh, it's been interesting playing it kind of around some of mm -hmm. these waves uh, through through the waves of, of betas and and seeing it kind of take shape uh, with kind of the different passive abilities mm -hmm. and active abilities. Uh, was it challenging bringing that stuff to something like I think yeah. a lot of people think about Quake as a very pure thing. Yes, this yes, is another yes, layer. yes. When we when we announced the game and we said there would be champions in it with abilities, people freaked out. They're yeah. like, "Oh my God, you're ruining my Quake!" <laughs> uh, but um, uh, but you know now that people have been playing it, mm -hmm. that's that's gone, and because people can see that it it really does not change the way you play the game. I mean, it's still very skill-based, still with the classic arena shooter, uh, but the champions, they just, their abilities and their passive abilities, they add a lot of depth. Like today, we had some of the best Quake players in the world playing the game at the big ESL booth, and mm -hmm. uh, you saw a lot of strategy, a lot of depth that you, don't, you would not normally get in a Quake game. Sure, yeah, I, I'm just, you know, from picking the different champions, yeah. and because it's a different starting stats and stuff like that too, right? So, yeah, yeah, you have speed and you have, you know, health and armor and stuff. Yeah. Does you know, it but, do you think of it in terms of uh, team composition mattering? You know, people think about something like Overwatch uh, as being like this very, you know, like oh, you got to put your crew together just right. Uh, is Quake Champions do you, do you see it the same way? Uh, yeah, yeah, to like yeah. today we saw with the pro teams, you know, really try the guys uh, picking champions that fit with with okay. their team. You know, yeah. you had one fast guy, one tanker, um, and um, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you saw that dynamic. Cool, cool. So there is no one formula, so, which is really nice that there has, this hasn't happened. But there <laughs> yeah. isn't just one formula. Like everyone picks these guys. Yes, and, yeah. yes, yes. Thank God that hasn't happened. So that means we've done something well, mm. and we we've we balanced it correctly. Cool, Lauren. How have things been going, man? It's like uh, it's an, another year. You're back here with us. We've we've talked about everything from VR to AR and, and, we and back again. We have. We have. But uh, what uh, what brings you to the show this year? Are you can you showing stuff behind? You, you we're showing around? stuff behind closed yeah, doors. Sneaking the thing around. And yeah. Going like, hey, yeah. we got this thing. Like, yeah. We're not not necessarily making fans happy with that, but. Um, but you know, you yes, get out there yes. too early, and then they slaughter you for this reason or that. Of course. So we're just course. delaying the slaughter, you know. <laughs> yeah. But we know it's coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and how's that been going? Is it's it, been is going it... actually pretty great. It's uh, like hunting for a publisher kind of meetings, no. or you're like looking. For... Okay, nice. <laughs> no, Good. we yeah. we we bypass that world. Smart. But we are looking for a partner for physical distribution because oh. we want to get a disc out this time, even though we're self-published. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I think that'll go well. I think we got something fairly special, but talk is cheap, you know. So sure. it needs to be great. And um, uh, you know, it's. It, I try to see a lot of things at the show. So show is so busy this year, you can't yeah. see anything, right? Yes, Body yeah. odor 
factor is high. <laughs> it's really high. Not as bad as Gamescom. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, not as bad as Gamescom. No Gamescom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's high. You know, for LA, it's unusually high. And the it's, Uber it's, drivers are talking about it. Yeah. You know? No. Yeah. Well, today was definitely probably I think the, the warmest day of the week too. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that, that, that <laughs> yeah. really helped. Uh, so we've been. You know, it's it's a it's a it's a weird balance today because I mean you're right on the cross, right? You got beta out there, mm -hmm. and, and but uh, the the announcement time to to release time has to be shorter because people have a shorter mm -hmm. attention span, sure. really, right? Yeah. So if you're a year out, don't start talking about it too much yet. So we do things to engage the core audience, but we haven't been doing things to really launch outward yet. Mm -hmm. And that's coming, and I think we got you know a lot of bullets in the belt that people aren't expecting, hopefully. Yeah, cool. We'll see. And then they'll shoot us down to humbling size in no time, I'm sure. Well, you know, but at, yeah. least, it's, at least it will happen in a short window from announced <laughs> exactly, release instead exactly, of stretching exactly. the murder out over three <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's nicer. It's a more condensed post-traumatic stress era. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. And we'll, we'll, we'll take that. Yeah. And, and yeah. I guess, you know, with with the way Doom was announced mm -hmm. and, and shown and shown again and stuff like that, it definitely seemed like it gave people a whole lot of time to yes. come up with a lot of things to say about Doom. Yes, yes, yes. Keep it small. Like like Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. Mm. The, you know, we, we announced it this week and it comes out this year and yes, yeah. keep it short. Yeah, that, keep it that, short. Keep but, it short uh, right? Bethesda has gone into short, focused, hit them hard. Right, go. nothing without six months. If it's not in six months, you don't hear about it from Bethesda. And, yes. the, and the surprise there is that you don't know who's going to emerge as competition in your release window because right. everyone's holding back mm -hmm. longer. Well, now, yeah, it's a, well, now it's a Wolfenstein, Assassin's yeah. Creed, and Mario yeah. all on the same day. Mm -hmm. that's, yes, that's, that's, what, oh, that's what we end up. Now? I, be, I believe all three of them are. Or it's ten twenty-seven, right? So, right, yeah. and then you're yeah. like, what? What are they doing? Like, yeah. we, we released the original game back in 97 yeah. Odyssey and then Final Fan Fantasy 7 a week later right so our sales are like yay no uh, <laughs> you know ugh. like how do you deal with that you know you don't so yeah. you recover uh, unless you're like going to be nimble enough to just move stuff around and yeah. and, and try to uh, play that game but that doesn't yeah seem but you know it's, it's funny yeah. I divert for a second because you got into gaming because you were a big Doom fan, mm -hmm. right? Yep. That was that was yep. your history, right? So check this out. I don't know if you know the story. So I was in visual effects at the time when mm. Doom came out. And yep. Doom, someone someone created a uh, a mod that ran on Unix. Mm -hmm. yep. And then all the I was in visual effects and film at the time in Los Angeles, and everyone who was in film was running on Unix workstations. Right. Mm -hmm. But at yeah. the time they were like eighty thousand dollars a piece of, of hardware, yeah. right? Yes. So no no consumer side of stuff mm. like that. But someone made a Doom mod. So now, ILM, Pixar, Rhythm and Hughes, all these kind of, everyone's playing Doom. I mean, totally addicted, yeah. right? Like totally addicted. So work is grinding to a halt, right? And this was one of the things that convinced me that I needed to get into games. Yeah. Right? So here these guys are working on like Academy Award winning movies and they're deciding not to work on them to just play Doom. I, and at ILM and at really Pixar, <laughs> they started saying, if we catch you playing Doom, damn it, you're, you're fired. That's funny. Yeah. And people got fired. Because oh, they yeah. couldn't stop. Is all you had to hear was, oh, someone's in there, and they're, they're still fighting, they're kicking your ass, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that once was you hear it. one person doing it, you're like... You, yeah, you but to see that phenomenon, way, right? To see what could happen from a modded thing that was on land mm -hmm. networks, and we're doing this, and no one had it before, and you, can, yeah. you had the impression of 3D in this. Yes. It was, it was a factor that drove me towards games, because I saw that even the visual effects guys couldn't help themselves. You know, they were risking their job to continue yeah. playing. I mean, I, you know, I think I may have told the story before, but uh, you know, did, I have a similar story with Wolfenstein. Yeah. Uh, when, when Wolf 3D came out, it was, I was, uh, I was kind of loosely going to company. You know, I was, was kind of getting into this line of work. You know, I was still in high school and, uh, and we were going to see, uh, it was a VR company because you know, there was that kind of virtuality, dactyl nightmare era of mm, VR. Back when, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Um, three, frame, three frames per second yeah, VR. Yeah, yes. but oh, those frames. <laughs> uh, yeah. And we were seeing a company uh, somewhere in San Francisco that had a tank game in VR. And there were, it was, you know, and I was 16, 17 years old, so like that was like the coolest shit I had ever seen. Uh, and so, you know, they're putting us in this cockpit and we're putting on this headset and going like, well, the frame, you know, like this is probably the most amazing thing ever. You, it was before you knew that the yes. bad frame rates were bad frame rates. <laughs> and played that for a while and, you know, we're hanging out, chatting, and a guy walks up and goes to one of the other, the guy we're talking to with the company goes, hey, have you seen this Wolfenstein thing that just came out? <laughs> And they're like, what totally is this? different, yes. And, and, and walks over there and goes, you need to check this shit out. You need to come over here and look at this. And these guys that are working on just the most advanced future tech of the era, and us who are just, you know, are like hovering around this computer looking at Wolfenstein 3D for the first uh -huh. time, just like, oh my 
Yes, well, yeah. gaming has been the, the tip of technology. It's been, you know, it's it's yeah. it's always driven, you know, the uh, huge hardware, you know, push. I mean, it'll, it's pushing VR. VR eventually there will be something social, something, you know, like totally. some app. But it was gaming that pushed it. Right. Mm -hmm. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you ever see? Well, I guess like now. Uh, Doom is coming mm -hmm. to VR. Yeah. Yes. What is what is that all about? It's, it looked like a very different experience yes. than, than I'm, Doom. I'm glad you pointed. Yeah. Yes, that is that is good to note. Uh, yes, you you are not the Doom Marine. You are a, a different character, but you're in that universe. Um, you're in that setting, and um, it really it's it's a complete experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is engineered differently because it is VR. I mean, if you played Doom in VR, you would probably throw up. Yeah. But it's it's a little bit different. But but it's awesome though. Do you, do you think that, you know, I, I guess like it depends on how the tech develops, but do you have in the back of your mind, you're just like, this is the, like, the, there's the VR game that you wish that you could make if people just wouldn't get sick or, you know, yeah. like, I think about like Doom, I think about Quake, you know, mm -hmm. there's just something about this idea of just like, what if we were just rocket jumping? Yes, yes. The, uh, just... People have asked us, oh, you should, you should do Quake Champions in VR. Yeah, and it's, it's like, like no, that'd be crazy. That'd be... But <laughs> spectating mode. Spectating oh, would sure. be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can sit yeah. there and you can watch those guys go back yeah. and forth um, at your pace. Yes, at right. your pace. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we, we, I still think. I mean, VR is awesome. We, we still have a, a ways to go. We, we have to lose the cord. The cord is killing VR. Yeah. Uh, I was. Yes, I was saying earlier. Like I've, I've developed a skill to step over the cord, but it's a weird. <laughs> yes. You shouldn't have to develop the skill to step over the cord. Yes, and, and if I if I had the the VR headset on and and my wife came home some night and she caught me with this thing going. The night would not be what I would plan. So it's yeah. still there's still a whole bunch of weirdness going on that we need to get over. Yeah, yeah. Especially depending the, on what you were watching. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, and that's that's kind of the thing I think I think for for me with VR in a lot of cases. The thing I've come to realize. Uh, I got married about a year ago, and so that you know that changed a lot of things about how I'm living my life. And porn Pornhub is not getting yes. nearly en Turns enough out log hours anymore. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so. VR became very different at that point because now it's like, okay, well, you know, when I put this on, I have to go all the way away. And it's mm -hmm. not just conversations with my wife, it's Twitter on my phone, it's whatever I've got going on, my second PC monitor, whatever mm -hmm. I got, you know, I've got four screens in the room I'm in, it's information overload, but that's just how I've come to take in the world. And this is a problem. And yeah. VR shuts it all off in a way that mm -hmm. sometimes even VR is not enough. It's like, no, I, I, need, I need more. So in an increasingly social world, VR is very antisocial. Weirdly enough, right? Yeah, and it's and it's a prohibiting factor. Like yeah. like, I would have expected it to take off faster. I mean, we can say you know Sony's out selling mm -hmm. units, Gear is out selling units. Totally. Yeah. Um, and, and but I then think again, we can also say, like, that, the, the tech is incredibly impressive. You know, like, it really there's is. There's some really neat, amazing really stuff. Is. But you're uh, isolating yourself away, and it's mm -hmm. not safe. Right? Yeah. Because we got all kinds of things coming, with uh, all the back the blowback of VR. Right. Right. The kid who's mad at his older brother, so now he sticks a sharp, sharp object in a room while the brother's in VR. Right? Yeah. That's coming. It'll be on YouTube soon, I assure you. Right. The kid on the gear on the subway, and he's getting pickpocketed, and everyone will uh -huh. think that's funny, right? That's that has coming. to have happened by right. now. The like kid, just statistically. The kid who gets in a car after six hours of playing VR and then gets in a car accident and kills the family. That's coming too. Right. The neural growth changes that happen because you're in our VR. That's coming too because it's real, right? Mm -hmm. So imagine for the, in the first time in human evolution, you're experiencing a completely alternative reality, except your motor skills have not been turned off, right? We dream, right. we run, we do all these things, but our bodies stay still, right? Mostly, mm -hmm. right? Unless you have dream issues, unless you have sleeping issues, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> or various types of you know neurological problems. Mm -hmm. But for the first time, you're not disconnected, so it inevitably is going to change a neural pathway growth. You know, we don't know what that means, right? But inevitably, it's going to happen because your experiential uh, experience is now dislocated in a way that, for millions of years, has never happened before. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of these these factors that are going to weigh in. YouTube is going to document a lot of it, whereas before we didn't have it, right? Right. And uh, it's going to be really interesting. And um, my personal bet is that uh, AR, if AR takes off sooner, then it's yes. over. Right. Right. Yeah. Because. Because AR can be mobile mm -hmm. and social, and meaning, can, meaning everything else in my life can stay engaged, but now I can start yes. engaging an alternative reality laid on top of my reality. Yeah. But if I have to dislocate from reality, then it's a very 
disengaging experience for right. anyone else in the household, right? Yeah, and yes. parents are already pissed off enough that they see the kids on a on a PlayStation long enough. I bet, yeah. Long enough. Suddenly they're watching yeah. kids. Now just they're going just, like later. <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> you know, now they're, they're totally really gone. gone, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, and, and I think you know that's again. I think I think you know as that tech develops, like of course AR makes the most sense because yeah. even in cases where you need VR, you can mm -hmm. just black out the glasses mm -hmm. and you know make it traditional traditional. Tradition, traditional, traditional VR. VR. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and probably get the best of both out of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's, it, you know what? You've seen this 20 years, these trends. Yeah. Remember? And this is, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll see how it really kind of I, yeah. shakes no, out. I look at it and think, like, you know, the, like the thing that changed for me is, like, I, I'm a, an extreme believer in the technology. Uh, I look at it and go, like, it works, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a way that, like, uh, you know, it didn't work. In the 90s. Yes, that's right. Uh, Thanks, Dust. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, we uh, screwed that up. Pay, pay to the order of. <laughs> right. Um, that, that that tech is too impressive to... Uh, I was when it's done well, yeah. it's, it's pretty mind-blowing. Yeah. Right? Uh, even when it's done poorly, it's still kind of <laughs> yeah. mind-blowing. Uh, but the thing I've found is that I'm just spending way less time doing it because the software hasn't gotten better fast mm -hmm. enough in a lot of cases. Yeah. Or it's just... Or that, that kind of... Antisocial aspect of it, yeah. yeah. And we and we still have the uh, you know the install base isn't there, so that the funding is really going for the real AAA yes. yeah. level stuff. We see a couple indicators of it. We see some amazing demos. Uh, you know, we see some valid games that are valid experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, but if the install base isn't there, who's really going to fund that content that's reaching the levels of the AAA that we yeah, see on it's, the it's normal consoles? It's still expensive to make games. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't yeah. get cheaper to make it a VR game. It doesn't get cheaper because it needs to run at 120 frames per second in stereo. It's yeah. not cheaper. Yeah. For a thousand yeah. people. Right, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So at, at id, it must be what, like, well, I, what's it like having these id properties, the classic id properties still it, not, not only around, but, but like very much in relevant. vogue and relevant. Yes. And yes. You know, we're talking about Doom. We're talking about uh, Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. We're talking about Quake. Where's Commander Keen? What are we doing? <laughs> I haven't drank enough tonight. All right. So let it all, uh, all right. Um, we have some people back there laughing. <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, it is. We are truly blessed that uh, um, you know because all the games have that spirit, and you know we've done lots of things different throughout the years, but we maintain the spirit. And uh, uh, it was it was very evident with Doom. It had that classic Doom spirit, but there's lots of modern things that were put on top of it. Definitely. Champions, same way. You know, feels like the game that you played 20 years ago, but it's new. You know, Wolfenstein has tapped into that emotion uh, right. that has always been in in the franchise. Uh, so really, we maintain the spirit of the titles. That's key. Yeah, that's something that I just you know I, I think when when Doom got announced. Even having seen Wolfenstein, you know, kind of come mm -hmm. and go over the years and become popular and it kind of mm -hmm. fade out, and mm -hmm. you know, it was very hard to believe as a big fan of Doom and, and Doom Two to like bring back Doom. I just don't see in a Call of Duty world what is Doom even mean? Man, Doom could be awesome, and and it I'm turns saying, out right. And it, I was talking to Dino De Laurentiis, mm -hmm. oh yeah, who produced the movie, right? Yeah. And he asked me, why do you think it didn't go so well? The movie? Yeah. Oh, I thought the movie's great. It had a character named after me. <laughs> well, I mean, how that's going to be yeah, bad. Well, it's like, I have one rule. If, if there's a character named after me, it's an awesome movie. So is that is that the is that the one awesome movie? That is the one awesome movie ever. Right. Okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Go ahead. We'll no, try to get that another second one made. Yes. Right yeah. there. I don't know what this is. on the phone. We're yeah. going to get another yeah, one. Yeah, but it was Dr. Will. What do you think? And I was like, you got an awesome property, but you cared too much with the gamers thing. Sure. Right? Yeah. Like, how often do you listen to a movie audience about how it should shape your script? Yeah, no, right? never. No, the audience doesn't want a script that they wrote. They want a great movie, right? And, mm -hmm. they, and here's the thing about gamers. I'm just like, mm -hmm. probably going to get shot for this, <laughs> but it wouldn't be the first time. So <laughs> you got a great property, Doom. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, this is hell opens up on Mars, man. Let's go back to Babylon, and let's, like, trace the roots. Let's get into the ancient history. Let's get into the black magic of all this. Let's get into the goetic, yeah. this and that, right? Uh, and, and you could really get into deep stuff. And, and he had asked me this, you know, it was right when it released. And I was like, you cared what the gamers think, man. Of course gamers are going to give you their opinion. That's what gamers do, it's, right? Go on the net. They, right? they pay Tell some of them to do it. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's brutal, right? Yeah. But you listened. Right? Well, here's what they really cared about. After all the shit that they're talking, what they really cared about, give us a great movie on a property we loved. Now, you're the one who makes movie. 
why did you listen to the game to the gamers on how you should make the script? Sure. Right? Yeah. Because if you delivered a great, great movie, and I think the content is there, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like a Doom fan from way back. I mean, Quake is a different story, because every time I log in, these little pricks shoot me every fucking time. That'd be a right. different, very different movie. <laughs> yeah. That's Feel old, play Doom. Yeah. Very yeah. short. Yeah. Play yeah. Quake. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. short movie. Yeah. yeah, I log in, bang, I'm yeah. dead. Again and again and again. It's I think, your fault, Tim. Yeah, I think that's what, yeah, <laughs> but like that, that's probably what happened with the Resident Evil movies, right? Is because they've they're on a tear. I mean, they're going to reboot them as soon as they're done making. You know, they made yeah. the last one. I think, yeah, yeah. But like, you know, those movies don't actually have that much direct ties to the games. <laughs> Not uh, for a long time. And they they work. It's the, it's they the work most on their successful own. game franchise mm -hmm. during yeah. movies, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know, beautiful starlets help. Oh, well, for sure. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, you could have got someone like that. Uh, hey, man, to be fair, I think The Rock was in the, Yeah, we The Rock. Yeah. yeah. The Rock was yeah. in Doom. He's a beautiful starlet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know. Yeah. And he's very nice. Uh, oh. No, nicer yeah, yeah. than he needed to be. I bet. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good, yes. Good he's, he's really nicer than he yeah. needs to be. Yeah, that's, yeah. He's a good guy. That's awesome. So with uh, with Quake Champions, like, what's it been like kind of returning to Quake? I feel like with, with Doom, there was that essence of just like, okay, let's distill this thing down to... The essence, but modernize yes, so, all around. Um, but like with Quake, so it's the, multiplayer, so there's still a lot yeah. of like people have those expectations about this and that and this feel That's and this. That's the thing. So it's a, it's a Quake game. So it uh, the the greatest thing about it is that it's a Quake game. The thing that works against it is it's a Quake game mm -hmm. because there are people that love Quake One, Quake Two, Quake Three, Quake Four, and they all have something different in them. So when Champions came out, people would be like, I don't like the speed of the rocket launcher. I don't like air control. I don't like this. Make it like Quake 4. Make it like Quake 3. Make it like Quake 2. So there's that. Uh, but I think we, we kind of balanced it out, which, which, which with the Champions, it's helped. Because we have some champions that feel like Quake World, some champions feel like Quake Three. Right. Some, so that has helped. But um, and the cosmetics, so you can the unlock the proper rocket yes. launcher skin. And, yes. Yeah. Yes. And and today one of the uh, one of the pro players from Team Liquid played with the Quake One. Uh, you know, rocket launcher and the Quake 2 lightning gun and stuff. So that was yeah. cool. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that, is, that ha has been a challenge mm. to get everyone's ideas of Quake because people have these memories of Quake. Right. I was in college and I played Quake for the first time. I, my, me and my dad used to play Quake together. So they take these memories of and they project them onto what they're playing. And if it doesn't match that memory, then they're like, you ruined Quake for me. Of course, yeah. You know, so it's it's it, it's been fun. I can say that. You know, it's been a bit of, a bit of a challenge, but because it has a lot of feedback. The, yes, there, there's been that. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, yeah. I, I imagine. I mean, you know, if, if anything, that's that's got to be the, again that blessing in the yeah, curse. Yeah. How like, how willing are you to step beyond that expectation and take the risks? Uh, I mean, well, you know, we had a champions. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, yes, clearly, clearly. yes, it was. Um, I mean, plus, I mean, we've done this long enough to know that if you make a game that you love, there's a good chance that other people will like it too. Right, mm. right, yes. And how much? But, but, I mean, this is like a legitimate question. Question today, right? So, we're more and more shaped because we do have rapid user feedback, mm -hmm. right? But then we tend to hear the most vocal the most. Right, right. And then mm -hmm. that can really tilt. Yes. Tilt. Uh, not necessarily in the best place that everyone else is going to like the game because the loudest voices tend to be for sure them, yeah. rise, yes. rise to the noisiest level. Uh, and I think that's, you, you said it, which is build a great game that we love. And so you go, you Quake, oh, you killed Quake for me because it's not like Quake 4. Well, that was fucking Quake 4. Yes. Right? And we and gave you that game. We didn't ruin Quake 4. Theoretically, we're you, evolving, you still play we're evolving the franchise, right? Uh, you and if you can take that into that next yeah. realm, mm -hmm. but, it's, but it's like you know you're going to suffer some backlash. You know you're going to do yes. it. But you got to Because the people that love it, it are right? plain. Right. The people that don't love it are like, I don't love it. Right. Yeah. Send. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. that's. Uh, I went back and forth because you know I still have like Quake Live installed mm -hmm. and and Thank still you. play a fair amount of that and I'm terrible at it now as it turns <laughs> out, but that's okay. I still enjoy myself and and so it's been interesting seeing, you know, kind of Quake Live as kind of this yes. continuation of of the Quake Three legacy and then mm -hmm. getting into that Quake Champions uh, beta and going like, oh, this is. They've made some changes, okay, all right, but it still has the basic feel. Yeah. And then over the course of, you know, week to week as it's been shaped, kind of seeing it and going like, oh, this is a good, yes. great-looking I mean, arena shooter. So in our production, in, in our path, 
the first milestone was make it feel like Quake. Mm. So, you know, we just got it in as fast, you know, got, got everything working, got some outside people to come in, play it. Does it feel like Quake? Uh, yes. Okay, good. And then we're done with that. Then we started to focus on the other things. So, wait a minute, you started all over on tech? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we you didn't, you didn't evolve existing mechanics. No, this you started. Fresh. This is it. <laughs> we like we start over all the time. Yeah, ah, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is like, you know, I mean, heck, if we made Doom Three with Quake Three tech, it'd been done in a year. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> New tech. Yeah. And yeah, I mean that eyeball looks really good. So when yes. it turns out, when you start over with new stuff and you get the yes, yes you get yes. all, all I mean, the stuff that comes with that. I mean, we're going to be better. We I, we have a good production pipeline now that lets us be more, you know, iterate yeah. on it. And, and how do you find the right level of content for something like this when it comes to like choosing like, hey, how many champions we need to put in this thing, or like, or how many maps are you going to launch with? Not that I'm like going like, how many maps are you going to launch with? It's, but, it's, but how do you determine? As much as we get done by the time. Sure. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Eight, well, how do done. you measure that? You measure it in terms of, you know, it's a poundage ratio. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. What are you going hours to play? Hours to? How are you figuring that out? On a purely well, live. You know. I mean, we, uh, you know, we we have some stats on what people play mm -hmm. and how long they play. And, uh, and Quake, playing Quake Champions or any Quake game is, can be physically draining. Mm -hmm. So we know that most people really only spend about 30 minutes a day playing. Really? Yes, they, most people can't really handle more than that. You know, the hardcore people play all day long. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so you take your average, kind of put people in the, the, the pool, you draw a curve, you kind of figure out, ah, this is the, what we need to make. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's more math behind it. Originally, we just made stuff. You know, yeah. like like people are like the quad damage is the greatest thing ever. We just made that up. It's like, well, we put uh, more Satan in this one. Yes, Ship it. it just worked. <laughs> Extra you know? Satan, go. There's like there's you know this map that I made 15 years ago. Someone someone just today said it was so genius that you you did not place a railgun in that map. And I was like that's because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. That's, that's, that's true genius, <laughs> man. Genius. That's you know. So we were just throwing stuff against the wall. Now we're a little more scientific and stuff that we make. Yeah. But. Do you worry that the science sometimes ruins? I mean, you talk about feedback and knowing when to listen, but do you ever, do either of you ever get worried that the science is going to ruin it? I know, like, we're for, pretty lame on science. Yeah, you know? for us, yeah. like, we've got access to all kinds of numbers and stats and time spent yeah. and engagement yeah. and all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm just when like, you, uh, you when, when you have, uh, you know, tournament play, when you have arena play, I think, you know, you're, you're tracking analytic behavior at a much tighter level. Yeah. You know, when you have the type of experiences that we've been building, you know, historically, which mm -hmm. is, you know, more into the category of single player, right. you know, story-ish mm -hmm. action adventure game. Uh, you're going a lot more with your gut. You could probably be more scientific. We just said, like, where did they yell loudest? What did mm -hmm. they like the most? Sure. You know, when were the death threats? And we can measure that, you know, yeah. get a better idea of like what we should do, what we shouldn't do. Would you ever even want more data out of that? Because I know like something like, as, a, like, as like Mass Effect, into, you, can, you can opt in to like send them a lot of data about how you played well, and all this stuff. Well, we're totally welcoming that data. Yeah. You know, how much we process is another story. For sure, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but, uh, uh, and there's a part of it where, um, you know what, personally as a designer, I tend to think more like a film director, which is not necessarily a smart thing to say on this show, but uh, I tend to think that way. So I tend to think if we have some ideas that can blaze some new territory, that can make it exciting, we should take some chances on it. Yeah. And, uh, and it's tricky because if we talk about it early, then there's all kinds of potential mm -hmm. blowback. Mm -hmm. uh, you promised this, and it wasn't in the game. Right. And it's like yeah. so. I've just learned just shut the, shut the fuck up. Right. You know, yeah. until we're there and we really have the goods, and then we can tease at it in certain abstract ways. Yeah. Uh, but if we start getting specific, it's you almost can't win. Mm -hmm. You know, so you might excite people, you, but you're going to be disappointing someone else at the same time. Right, and, so and we, you're just turning them into like all of a sudden now they're like, well, now I want it now. Yeah. You're like, well, yeah. that's not yeah. that was never the. And intent. then part of it, we we pursue our own gut with it. Like mm -hmm. this is where it should go. This is where we feel it should go based on our experience with an IP that we've been living with for 20 years. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's like here goes the hair. <laughs> but uh, and in that. Uh, you really have to be able to afford uh, an element of the creative process where you can sort of fail, fail faster. Mm -hmm. right? How, how sure. much is that? Right. Yes. Like in the past, we're like, no, it's a great idea, man. I'm going to make it happen. Locked and now in. we're like, no let's changes. figure out if it's a good idea fast so we can kill it quick if it sucks. Mm. But if it's great, you know, we'll expand on it. And uh, through that process, we learn a lot. Um, but in our type of game, we're not getting the same type of feedback. I mean, we're, we're, we're heading towards live. There'll be some surprises on that, I think, uh, coming soon. But 
without spilling the beans because he's going to kill me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, not kidding. Yeah, but... And uh, so a lot of it is like gut. You know, if you go back to filmmaking, right? Right. The gamers know what they want to a large degree, but they want to be surprised, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And so you got to deliver that surprise. Filmmakers have to think different. They need to always surprise, you know, unless you're, unless you're Michael Bay and you know who your 15-year-old male audience sure, is and yeah. you just make more Hey, surprise, these things know. blew up. Good. Yeah, blow so, them up bigger. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> it reminds me of so many things. Yeah. But uh, so a lot of it is that gut, and you're trying to balance that with some semblances of science. And I, but I think if you do that too much, and we're in a landscape that we largely see today, mm -hmm. which is big brands... Uh, derivative uh, product that um, they're, they're measuring, I mean, huge financial risks, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't ding anyone for being cautious on huge financial risk. But so then you got to measure more succinctly, are we delivering what they want and how much can we, you know, can is it 90% what mm -hmm. they want, 10% yeah. surprise, is that the right ratio? Right. And all of that's a risk. But when you're in a big brand, like if you built Grand, uh, Grand Turismo, whatever the latest number, right, and you don't do an outstanding 10 out of 10 job, you suck. Mm -hmm. Because you have so much data of knowing what they want, of knowing where you could go, of knowing what should be added. Mm. But if you're in like an abstract world, you're in uh, alternative universes, people are looking at you to develop that in ways that are going to be compelling to them. Right. right? And if they were going to write the script, they're not that interested in you anymore. Yeah. So there's a, and I think there's a lot of risk with that, and you have to trust the creative process, and that's a, that's a whole nother, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. sort of a can of schizophrenia. Totally. To, uh, I think know, that's, engage. I mean, that's why uh, I think Wolfenstein ended up being like one of, if not the standout of the show for me, because you look at that, and you know, I think back to what Wolfenstein has been, but also I think about you know even just the the first Wolfenstein game in this in this chain from Machine Games, and seeing that trailer, you're like. Well, they did some wow. crazy stuff. Those yeah. machine game guys yeah. are crazy. They went out there in like a good way. Yeah, but they did something. They pitched. So like a while back, they they came and they they pitched the story to me, and uh, they said there's there's something in that's kind of like really out there, and just so they started going and they would get to something. I'd be like, oh, is that it? They're like, oh no no, that's not it. <laughs> and they would go on and they like, and they'd explain. I was like, is that it? Is that the crazy thing? They're like, no. And then they're like, this is. I'm like, holy cow. So those guys have just gone. I mean, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's been awesome. great to see just because of, of how strong just wait that till you play. Game There's was. more yeah. crazy than you even know. Yeah, no, that's uh, crazy. That's crazy. very exciting yeah. uh, <laughs> to hear. Because uh, yeah, we, we had Jens on last night and talked to him for he's, a little he's while. He's insane, isn't he? Awesome. Yeah, yeah he's definitely. like the best guy ever. And I just think back to for me, it was just like the lineage from uh, back in kind of the, the Starbreeze days for stuff mm -hmm. like Riddick and stuff like that, and what they've what teams like that have done for first person games. Yes. And and the way you see that in Wolfenstein, uh, and we see this kind of like old concept of Wolfenstein merged with that kind of style, and it just yes, those uh, machine game guys. Like in in the beginning, they'd be like, "Hey, can we get your opinion on something?" I'm like, "No, you're good, <laughs> you're good, go." Yeah, you don't need my opinion. Make awesome. Yeah, awesome. Well, uh, I think we're gonna let you guys go. Quake. So anyone can go to Quake.com. Yeah, Quake.com. Get into the game right now. If you can click a button, you can play the game. All right, I. Uh, well, I'm already in the game, so I was going to say I'll use yes. my clicking fingers. But what's your, you know, your, uh, your game? Uh, Monster Dunk. I've, Monster I've, Dunk. I've we'll, not played. Look him bit. up. Look me up. I'm we'll probably, find your stats. I'm probably terrible. Monster Dunk. Probably terrible. Probably, probably terrible. terrible. Right. And, and Lauren. Uh, so, you know, you can follow. We're running ARG on what's coming. Okay. So we're, we're slowly trickling it out. And it's, uh, it's depressing how fast the audience crowd solutions. Are. Yeah. Uh, that's always uh, eye-opening, but, you know, Oddworld.com, Oddworld on Facebook, Oddworld on Facebook. Yeah, awesome. Soulstorm is the new game that's coming. Yeah. We, should, we should be out. Uh, well, I can't say, because they'll kill me. We should be out someday, I yeah, guess. That's someday, the, yeah, someday. Not yeah. too, too distant future. All right. Uh, I guess those announcements will come soon. <laughs> All but, right, well, uh, thank you both for coming through. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having us, Jeff. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, we will take another break, and we'll be back with some pleasure. more guests yeah, pleasure. in the very near future. Stay tuned!